Okay, we're recording. I am joined today by Matt Stroll, who is a professor of philosophy at the University of Montana. Thank you for joining me, Matt. Hey, Brandon. Um, good to see you. Good to see you, too. So we're talking about our co-authored blog post on aesthetics for birds. And just to dig more deeply into some of the things we, we talked about there. And so uh, first question is, um, when we're disagreeing about art, what is it that we're doing, right? Is it, you know, if it's a genuine disagreement, we're not merely talking about our, you know, subjective impressions about it, right? Uh, you know, because that disagreement wouldn't go anywhere. Um, right. But it also, at the same time, doesn't quite seem like we're talking about matters of fact either. Um, that, you know, there, there may not be a matter of fact as to whether Death Wish 3 is better than Death Wish 4, right? Um, mm -hmm. It probably is better than Death Wish 4, uh, but <laughs> that's a different discussion. Um, so, so what do you think we're doing when we're disagreeing about art? Well, that's a, I think it's a very hard question. And I think that we're not going to be able to answer it in a fully satisfying way. But I mean, I certainly have some thoughts about it, right? Which is, um, so as you mentioned, right? People will often make a distinction between like what, you know, what I like and what I think is legitimately good or what I think is, you know, what I think, what is my favorite and what is the best, right? And I, and I do think that, when we make that distinction, I think we tend to overestimate, right, our ability to step outside of our own subjective attitudes and adopt some kind of an objective um, perspective. Because, I mean, that's not, no one's ever appreciated art from that perspective, right? We're always appreciating art from some, some subjective perspective or other. So I, th I think often the way, you know, the way that we, the way that we, when, when someone tries to set aside their own likings and say which things are the best, they're often still using the, the same apparatus, they're the same sort of subjective apparatus through which they form their subjective preferences. They're still using that same apparatus to come up with their judgments. It's just that they're trying to filter certain things out, right? So like, let's say for example, I know that I have like a bias in favor of Dolph Lundgren because I think he's awesome and so I'm gonna like over systematically overrate Dolph Lundgren movies right um so we, I might try to like filter that out I might be like okay set aside that stuff because I know I overrate it Wh what do I what do I like so you're still you're still looking at like what do you like what do you think is good and I think if you're not doing that the other thing that you're likely doing is trying to appraise cultural importance right like if you're not just sort of stating if you're not at some level reporting your subjective response to something, you're, you're appraising, you know, how something is perceived in the medium by people who have, you know, standing some kind of authority or standing um, in, in, with respect to that medium. So if I say like, well, it's not my personal favorite, but Citizen Kane is one of the greatest movies, what, what, what I might be doing is like reporting that that's just widely agreed upon by people who, who have, you know, thorough, ex, thorough acquaintance with the medium. Right. So like, and I think that, that like a lot of disagreements, what happens is we don't distinguish between different things we might be doing or else we just sort of falsely imagine that we can occupy some like objective perspective and then make judgments from that perspective. And so we, we end up like misunderstanding what the other person's stance is really about. Right. So like, let's say I'm arguing with somebody, you know, do you like this movie or not? Um, they might it's like they might not understand that like, you know, what exactly it is I'm trying to do. I'm like, let's say what I'm trying to do, let's say I say that like Black Panther is a great movie. What I might actually be doing is just reporting that like, look, it's a very culturally important movie. A lot of people agree that it has a lot of impact. And for that reason, it's undeniably a great and important movie, right? Um, and they might confuse that for me saying it's good in the sense that I like it or whatever, right? And so we might, and so in a lot of disagreements, I think that like this failure to make this kind of distinction ends up, you know, poisoning the well where people don't see eye to, people can't see eye to eye because they're actually doing different things. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, and, and further, you know, they're, yeah. they're talking about different things, they're coming at it from different perspectives, right? And so, you know, when you just say, this is a really good movie, 
right? Right. What do you mean by good? <laughs> right. And if, if you go, well, I don't think it's good. Well, maybe we're talking about two different kinds of, of good, right? Good right. with respect to relevance and good with respect to uh, filmmaking, good with respect to various sorts of things, right? Because there are ways to say that, no, this is a culturally, you know, significant film, right? It's good in that sense, but it has all of these other aesthetic defects, right? Despite the fact, right? Right. Uh, that it's a great film, right? And, and right, exactly. I, I think Black Panther is a great example of that, right? right? The, the third act of the, you know, CGI battle, right? right. Uh, either the huge one between the, you know, two warring groups and then, the um, you know, Black Panther versus Eric Killmonger, like the CGI there is terrible. And it's like, it at least <laughs> sucks me out of the move, movie. It's like, right. I don't, I have nothing invested in these, you know, pixels hurting one another. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so then, but then you, so you get on Facebook and you say, man, I was pretty disappointed by Black Panther. And what people hear you as saying is, you know, this movie lacks this cultural importance. It's, 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 it's overrated. When you're not saying that, you, 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 you could say, I don't like it. And what you mean by that is the CGI just ruined it for me. But, I do, but, but you could also at the same time recognize that, it, that the movie is really important to a lot of people and for a good reason. And people don't, people sort of misread what you're saying and then they respond in a hostile way because they think you're saying the, the other thing, right? Yeah, and it, it, it's, yeah, it's similar to, you know, it's hard to pick up sarcasm online, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, you know, the, the tone's missing, the inflection's missing. Um, and so, uh, you know, with, with and, you know, uh, social media platforms like, like Twitter especially, right, don't allow for, a long degree of nuance without, you know, having, um, you know, post after post after post after post, like post one, post two, post three, here's like my full view of this. Well, if you're right. doing that, you shouldn't be on Twitter. Right. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to say that, um, you know, Black Panther sucks, right? Like that's what Twitter's for, right? right. Um, if you want something longer and more nuanced, you maybe go on, on Facebook or a different platform, right? right. But even there, right? Uh, all sorts of things can go haywire. <laughs> Obviously, but but I mean, I think it, it's worth. I mean, I I'm not on Twitter, even though I have a like. There's a lot of reasons to be on Twitter. It helps you to promote your research. It's a good way to like find out about. You know, there's a lot of reasons to be on Twitter. But for me, I can't personally do it because the the way that the short format, the way the short format makes discourse. So it's like, you can only say this short thing and that brings out the worst in people, you know? And, and it like, it leads to this like oversimplified discourse where something gets tagged with like this very simplified little formulation and that like takes off and multiplies. And before you know it, there's a kind of consensus created around some dumb, you know, little slogan. And so like, I, I just find it too frustrating and too, that I can't even bring myself to do it, right? Yeah, but, and I'm not, I'm not on Twitter either for the same reason. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Right, it, it seems antithetical to good discourse. Um, right. You know, not that Facebook is, you know, necessarily promoting good discourse, but at least there's a possibility for You can curate your group yeah. in a certain way and it can, it can happen, it certainly can, yeah. Yeah, and, and on that point about curating your group, right, mm -hmm. do you think that there, there runs a risk of, you know, being trapped inside your own aesthetic bubble, right, right. where um, on, on Facebook, maybe other social media platforms, but certainly Facebook, right, where you exclude enough people from this conversation. And then it's just going to be, you know, you get in this echo chamber where it's just, you know, your views being parroted back right. to you, and it's just sort of self confirming. Right. Do you, do you think there's a, I mean, there's a concern there, but what do you think the concern there is? Right. Well, well, I, no, totally. And this is something that I've thought about, um, because I used to, for politics, I used to do this. I used to like keep conservatives political stances in my feed for this reason. It's like an anti-bubble measure, right? But then like we reached a certain point around, oh, I don't know, 2016, when for me at least, I like, I can't even listen to this anymore. So I like, I'm like, that's it. It's not worth it to me to like disrupt my peace of mind to have to hear this crap. So I just like close all that out, right? But like with aesthetics, I mean, one thing that's nice is that it should be lower stakes, right? Like, you know, I don't want immigrants to enter my country should, is much higher stakes than like, I didn't like the Marvel movie. So like, I, I'm still a little bit idealistic there where I want to say like, no, we should really keep the dialogue open and it'll be more productive that way, right? But like, I will say that, so that my approach to curating 
my 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 like group of people that I'm you know might be interacting with my movie posts. So one thing that I do right is I try to exp if I'm gonna like throw a post out there that's like all right let's talk about movies or let's talk about music or whatever. I try to frame it in a way where I like make clear that I'm not interested in yell people yelling at me or I'm not interested in yelling at anybody else, right? So like, I try to frame it, you know, in the way of like, like I've, I've even said explicitly, anybody who wants to participate, please go ahead, just be nice. You know, like I've said, you know, explicitly and, that, and it's like, I think that that goes a long way because when I framed it in that way, it, you know, if somebody, it's very unlikely that somebody's going to then like tromp around and act like a jerk. But if they do, I can just delete it, the comment, and they've been warned, whatever, you know. So um, that's one thing I do. But like, I find that that like I enjoy having. I actually, it's like very boring to me to have everybody agree with me all the time. So I enjoy running into, and I find it valuable, as we discussed in the piece, to run into opinions that I totally disagree with. So like. You know, for example, like there's a guy that I talk about movies with nearly every day. We at least have some small exchange and maybe a messenger about movies. And I agree with like, he knows who he is if he's watching this. I agree with like 5% of his opinions at most, right? Like I can just reliably assume we're going to disagree. And that's great because, you know, it's a respectful relationship and we're not getting angry at each other. But like I can, I can always find somebody that's going to have a different take that's going to help me see outside of my own perspective. But I will say, right, that there are certain people, certain opinions, certain styles that I do find cross the, you know, that are beyond the pale for me, even about art, not just about politics, where like, I don't really want to hear that anymore. So I certainly have, like, there are people who I've muted over their aesthetic views, because I find it's like those views rankle me so badly that it like messes up my day. Right, like I'm, I'm finding myself like an hour later thinking about this person's opinion and kind of being irritated by it. And so, like, once I get to that point where I feel like it's, it's sort of costing me more harm than it is benefiting me, I'm pretty likely to mute somebody. So, it's like, you know, if you're out there tromping around like negativity about Clint Eastwood, for example, I probably muted you. Right, like I just don't want to hear your crap about Clint Eastwood. Like I just don't. Yeah. So, right. So, for example, like. Um, like, like I, so I'll do that. And I think that helps my experience, right? That I, that I sort of have some, that I try to like have some level of filtration, but also try not to let a bubble form, try to keep contrary voices in the mix. Yeah. So it's not so much the, the content of the disagreement so much that matters. It's the style of disagreement, the right? Style, that, and, unless the content is a dismissive attitude towards Clint Eastwood, then you're out. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Can it be dismissive in in uh, you know a way that's sophisticated that's you yeah, know no, that's engaging okay. that's okay. That's like okay. that's yeah. okay yeah, but yeah. if it's just like uh, yeah, yeah, this dude saying. totally sucks you know no, no, no. after so he somebody, talked to that chair he's he's right. he's canceled right. right so somebody who has like like understands the importance and interest of Clint Eastwood but just doesn't like it and has good reasons for that sure I'll 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 talk to that person it's the it's like a dismissive condescending attitude like 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 somehow you're too good for Clint Eastwood that that's like what really rubs me the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, keeping on this this topic right and yeah. and you know we're going to write about this in part two of the post right. um but how are some ways of engaging uh in aesthetic disagreement online that circumvent hostility or overcome hostility or prevent hostility in some way? Like how do we avoid, you know, damaging negative disagreement online about art? Excellent question. And I think that, I mean, I think that you, you need a toolkit here. Like it's not just one, there's not one thing to do that's going to be the magic bullet. There's a lot of different things, not just to do, but not to do. Right. And I, and I think that like one thing that, we don't, I don't think, we don't, we don't really talk about this, right, very much, but there, there's a skill or like almost a social virtue that some people have more than others, and that is something that is cultivated, that's not something that, you know, that we develop naturally, something we have to work on, right, which is the, the ability, it's sort of like a conversational empathy, where you think about the other person's side of the conversation and how they might be experiencing it, you know, and, and so, like, and I think a lot of the time, people are quick to project their, so let's say that like, I'm not easily bothered by a certain form of conversation. I'm just gonna assume you're not either, 
right? And I think that, and it's like when we're, when we, when we're talking to people in person, we can read this off their facial ex expressions really easily, right? We can, we can see like, oh, I'm upsetting this person or you're frowning, like what, you know, whatever, you're getting angry. I can read that off your body language. But when we're just talking online, it's like very hard to pick up on how the other person is experiencing the conversation. So you need this like advanced kind of empathy where you like, you know, putting yourself in their position, like how are they experiencing what I'm saying to them right now without the normal cues to read off of, right? And so like for me, like, I mean, I try to like err on the side of caution, I guess you could say, right? I try to think like, so let's say for example, that um, let's say that you get on Facebook and you're like, the new David Bowie album is a masterpiece, right? Or the, the last David Bowie album is a masterpiece. Yeah, and, I did that. <laughs> right, right. I, I mean, I'm wearing I, no, the I David do, Bowie shirt right now, so. Right, right. Yeah. I happen to agree. I thought that Black Star, I thought that Black Star was so good that it was almost too painful to listen to. So I actually yeah. haven't listened to it that much because I find it so emotionally um, challenging, yeah. right? Um, but like, let's say though that I didn't think that, right? Let's say rather that I had heard it and I didn't like it, right? And let's say that like, um, I'm genuinely interested to hear what you have to say about this because, you know, like I like David Bowie in general and I wanted to like the album. I just didn't. And I, so I want to hear what you have to say about it in order to maybe like help me see it in a different way. Right. But I'm approaching it from a point of view where I'm going to challenge you in order to prompt you to steer me to see the, 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 the album in a different way. Right. So when I approach that, when I say, Brandon, and I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna tell you I don't like the album, right? There, there's, a, there's a matter of like me going through this step of thinking about how you're gonna experience what I'm saying and then trying to like pitch it at not just like the natural level that I, like the way it's gonna come out my mouth, but rather like in a way that's designed to promote a good interaction with you, right? So like, I might put it like this, I might be like, I might be like, so here's a bad way to put it. I might be like, dude, I saw, I, I, I saw you like the David Bowie album. I thought it sucked. Explain to me why it's good, right? And you're like on the defensive now. You're like, you're like you just said you love this thing. It's really important to you. And I'm like, it sucks. Prove me wrong, right? And so now, like, you, so if I think about this, I realize, like, like, I'm putting you in this really awkward position where, like, I'm setting you up to think that I'm going to reject whatever you say. But I'm asking you to like pour your heart out about this thing that you is really dearly important to you. You love the album and you're like, so you're like, in a, I'm putting you in a vulnerable position where like I could say something that would really hurt your feelings if I like reject the next thing you say, right? So like I didn't set us up to have a very good interaction, right? So if I think, now the other side of the coin though, you know, there's a funny Onion article that we linked about this. There's like, a, there's such a thing as, it's like, you know, part of the fun sometimes is flaming your friends a little bit about their opinions right so like there and it's like we you get to a certain point of comfort with somebody and you can just be like totally just make fun of their taste in a way that is internal to the friendship and that they find funny and that they know you don't mean in a mean way right so it's not i, I mean I, I certainly don't think that we should just be like super polite and civil at all times right so there has to be a kind of flexibility that depends on the context right where like i actually think about or I at least, you know, like have in the past thought about how to interact with you in a way that is going to be productive, right? And then I don't just come out guns firing, I like approach the conversation with a strategy. And again, the strategy doesn't need to be, oh, I know, like, I don't want to, you know, like, I don't want to offend you. I know, you know, it doesn't have to just involve all these like apologies and like, it can just be like, so here's might be a, a better way to bring it up, right? I might be like, dude, I saw that you really loved the David Bowie album. I really love David Bowie in general, and I really wanted to like this album, but I'm really having trouble getting into it. Like, can you, can you uh, tell me like, what's your favorite track? Like what, you know, like what should I be looking for, right? Now, so you see the difference with that, right? Where like now you're like, I'm inviting you. Um, I'm not like putting you on the defensive. I'm inviting you to show me your point of view. And remember, I don't, I don't think I agree with it. And I don't necessarily even expect to agree with it, but I'm interested to hear more. Right. And so, but I framed it in a way where you're not making yourself like vulnerable, right. To, to, to me, like hurting your feelings or by to the interaction. And so um, it's much more likely that you're going to be way more effusive in ex telling me how you feel about the album. And we're going to have a much better conversation. Yeah. Right. If you didn't poison it right off the gate by saying this album sucks, prove right. me wrong. 
<laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. Why would, why would you like something that sucks so bad? Right. What does exactly. it say about you, you idiot? Right. Right. Um, and that's how so many of these Facebook interactions start. Right. Yeah. Is like this like really clumsy way that is just ripe for a bad conversation. Yeah. yeah. Good. So I guess we'll write more about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we're at a good stopping point here. So awesome. uh, thanks so much, Matt. I appreciate thanks, it. Brandon. It yep. was really fun to talk to you as always. Indeed. Take care.